Everybody, Statler here at the Northeast Wisconsin Signature Event, checking with 536C Life, one of the most unique robots I've seen so far here in Over Under. You got to check this out. Pass through intake on this robot. Super excited to see that. But we're going to do a full breakdown of what this team brings. They've had three event wins so far, so we can't wait to showcase what this robot has to offer. Of course, we're going through their climb as well, too. A lot of other cool stuff as they uh, showcase the spot coming up here on Pits and Parts. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Girl Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit recf.org and get connected. Jacob, as we mentioned, one of the most unique uh, robots that I've seen. That's because you're a passer. I just watched your last match. What a cool implementation of strategy. So first off, talk to me about how you came up with this uh, since your last rebuild. And uh, of course, we got to showcase it off a little bit too. Yeah, okay. So uh, how we came up with this, um, going through our past tournaments, we really uh, thought that uh, controlling the tri balls was the best thing to do. And also that we needed to score them uh, extremely fast. Um, so we decided that instead of using a shooter or something, uh, we decided to just go and be able to intake through the bot. Yeah, all right. So we put the tri ball here, and then if you intake, it passes it through, and then it comes out the other side. Uh, so this is really helpful for uh, just scoring, and also when we fight another bot for a uh, like four tri balls, if they're trying to bowl. Uh, we can just steal them away and send them more to the middle of the field where we want them, where we can tr uh, control them better. Uh, and then we can also use this to match load really well. Uh, so it just, it, so it's really good for bowling. Uh, we can just do that a couple of times, send stuff through to the uh, to the other side of the field and score all those. Uh, and it's also really good for just scoring one at a time with uh, match loading. So obviously going this route, you're for going like a, a, a catapult or a slap or anything like that, but yeah. the meta of this game has evolved so much to where I think the route that you've gone really makes sense for that. Yeah. At what point were you like, hey, this is the direction we want to go for our team? Uh, I think we decided that around after our uh, first tournament, uh, because during those matches, we really started to see that if you're just match loading a bunch of stuff really quickly, uh, you start to lose control of yeah. where those points can go. Uh, so that's where our kind of strategy shift happened. We wanted to more focus on just controlling the tri balls that are in play before introducing more. When you're looking at the packaging of your robot here for that, like obviously mm -hmm. you have this big gaping hole in the middle of your robot, right? Yeah. So like, how did you come up with like able to package all your other components within what this frame is then? Uh, yeah, that was that was pretty difficult to do. Um, so how we did that, uh, we we model a bunch of stuff in Fusion. Um, so. It was pretty much just fiddling around with stuff in there, seeing where stuff would fit, uh, where like our wing pistons would fit, and how our intake would work, uh, as well as where to mount the brain. That was a, a very difficult issue uh, because it the brain is like such a large thing where it need, it either needs to fit on either the side or on top, uh, and we ended up going on top of the bot uh, because if we had it on the side, it would interfere with our hang mech. Yeah, I love the thought process goes that. And, and teams, you know, when you're watching so many teams that we talk to, those higher end teams are doing 3D solid modeling and getting their robots in there so they can see what that looks like ahead of time. So I'm, I'm glad to hear yeah. you say that as well, too. Let's talk about as we keep moving on to your robot, let's go through that uh, lift mechanism, a uh, combination with hang as well, too. Let's deploy that out and talk to you yeah. more about it. All right, so if you can deploy the hang mech. Uh, okay, so this is, uh, the strings are a little bit short right That's now. all right. But this is it in its fully deployed state. Uh, so what the what this is meant for is for if there are any teams that are still using that like shooting strategy, uh, it's meant to block them, make it as difficult for them as possible. Uh, and then also built into that underneath here is our hang mech. Uh, it's an A-tier hang mech just because of how our bot is balanced. Uh, but it uses four pistons here. Uh, to pull down and it, it pulls the bot up for an A-tier hang uh, and the the bar just kind of sits right in right in between those two uh, so that there's no like wiggling about or anything. In our original testing we had it so that it was just that top uh, standoff 
but when our bot would tip forward, uh, because of its weight is more towards the front, so it would tip forward and then it would like slide up towards the pistons so that we wouldn't actually get the hang. Yeah. So then we added those in post and it worked really yeah, well. Yeah, to try to get your CG a little bit better off. Yep. Yeah, for sure. Um, something I ask you, I mean, you're, you're a robot when I watch such an offensive scoring machine. Do you find yourself, at least at this signature event, using your blocker at all? Or is that just something in order to have just in case you need it? It's really at this point just in case we need it. I think we've only used it once during this event. Um, it was helpful more in like a little bit earlier season when a lot more people were shooting. Sure. But now that people aren't shooting as much, it's not really as useful. Yeah, makes sense. That's still good to have that versatility, though. Um, I noticed on your robot, too, uh, double-sided uh, wings as well, too. So let's deploy yeah. those out and just talk to me about uh, how you got that. And plus, uh, it mentioned before the packaging of it. Uh, mm -hmm. You definitely have some nice packaging just right here on the side. Yeah. So talk to me more about that. Yeah, OK. So our double-sided wings, uh, we the origin of those is kind of that we decided that because we can score on both sides of the bot really well, we might as well have the wings on both sides. Uh, it, just, it adds to that versatility. Um, and we also have them where they are able to lock. Uh, so this helps for skills runs or just when there's a lot of try balls like piled up next to the goal. Um, it is really helpful for scoring so that they stay, they stay locked in no matter how much I push on them. They're gonna, they're gonna stay out. Um, and then the packaging, uh, because we can't have them inside, like more towards the inside of the bot, uh, we just have them in like this like parallel stack sure. in the inside. So we have one on top of the other, uh, and that it's very compact. Uh, keeps everything on the outside so that nothing's messing with the pass through in the middle. I love the entire thought process that goes into robot. The last thing I want to ask you, uh, just going back to your pass through intake on here, yeah. um, especially from this side coming in, uh, any concerns in regards to like double possession at all, like or how do you mitigate something like that of a tri ball that's coming through on it? Yeah, our pass through is fast enough so that uh, it there's a very small chance that we have double possession, uh, even if there's like two tri balls like right next to each other and we intake them both pretty much at the same time, the first one is going to be coming out of the bot like right as the second one's going to be taken in. So our pass, -throughs, our pass through and intake are both running at 600 RPM, uh, which gives it that speed so that they can just fly through. About well, 600 RPM on that, that's yeah. uh, that's impressive, man. So, well, 5363 three Live, thank you so much for taking time. Like I said, one of the most unique and coolest robots I've seen so far in Over yeah. Under, so congratulations on a great design. Can't wait to see yeah. how you do here at the signature event, but good luck the rest of the season, too. Thank Thanks a you. lot. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Girl Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit RECF.org and get connected. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Most live shows can be found on the First Updates Now YouTube channel, live competitions at twitch.tv slash firstupdatesnow, and join our Discord at discord.gg slash firstupdatesnow. Check our other social offerings on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter.